it will surely come. You understand. See, my brother says sin does not appear what it is from the beginning. So the Bible says there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the but the in thereof are the ways of death. So in order to make a good decision, you cannot look at what it seems like at the beginning. You have to look at the end. At the what? End. So my brothers and sisters, when we look at hair, you cannot look at the hairstyles where it is presently and say, oh, there's nothing wrong with it. It may look cute now. It's almost like a man was in the store one time and a, a lady was there and my wife was telling me the story. She was in one of these uh, department stores and she went in and a lady was there and she had, I mean, all the hair was shaved off on the side and she had one tuft of hair at the very top. Just one tuft. Mm. Leaning over the side, just, 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 just over the side. And she's kind of a little self-conscious that she's in there. And all of a sudden she's kind of looking around trying to hear up to get to the store. And a man behind her said, mm, that looks so good. And she turns back around. Who is she talking to? And Brother Bill he said, I'm talking about you. She said, oh, you like this? <laughs> and then he said, that is, he said, look, I'm, I'm not from around here. I'm from New York. And we, we have that type of thing. That's what he really said. I'm the, <laughs> he, said, he said, we have all the styles. This is, this is it. He said, that hair is everything. That's what he said. And all of a sudden, now before she was a little kind of nervous, now she, <laughs> all she had was a little touch of this. You know, <laughs> I mean, now my brothers and sisters, she thought it was cute at that time. Someone else could think it was cute. But you cannot look at where the hair is now. You have to look at where it's going to end up. Are you following? So what we have to do quickly is understand something about the end of where hair is going to take us. It must necessitate us leaving the story of hair. So you say, what do you mean? What is this all about? How does it work? Now, any time you see in history where a civilization has become so confused. Now, I'm telling you this. Any time you see in history where civilization has become so confused that it no longer understands the God given, the natural God given order of life. You know what you know? That you're looking at a civilization or a nation that is about to what? Collapse. Collapse to reach its limit and come to an end. How do I know that? Because now watch now, because if we can see a civilization, if we can watch it. And see a civilization that no longer knows the natural God-given order that God has set up. We know that that nation is getting ready to reach its limit. It's getting ready to collapse. It's getting ready to come to an end. Now, how do I know that? Look at Leviticus. What book did I say? Leviticus. Now, what has to happen to a nation? The nation must become what? The nation must become what? Confused. When a nation becomes so confused, I'm going to put it up here. So confused that it no longer understands its natural what? God given order of life. Does life have an order? Yes or no? Yes. Now, my brothers and sisters, when it becomes so confused at this point, when the predominant social condition of the society no longer understands this natural God given order because it's so confused, that nation is getting ready to collapse. That nation is getting ready to reach the limit. Look at Leviticus 18. Look at Leviticus 18 and watch what the Bible says in Leviticus 18. Beginning in Leviticus 18, beginning in verse 22. Let's pick, they pick up together. Leviticus 18, verse 22. It says, thou shall not lie with what, everybody? Man. Mankind as with what? Mankind. It is an abomination. Now, what is it talking about when it says that a mankind should not lie with woman as mankind? Uh, they should not lie with mankind as woman. What is it talking about? Homosexuality. Homosexuality. The sexual orientation. What we are attracted to. God made male and female. Am I right? Now the Bible says, if he does so, it is an what? Now do you know what that word abomination means? It's unnatural. It's unnatural. It's an abomination. It's so unnatural that it's detestable to God. That's in the original language. That's what it means. Now my brothers and sisters, watch what is connected when something is unnatural. Look at verse 23. Look at what it connects right with homosexuality. It says, neither shalt thou what? Talk to me. Not just homosexuality, but when thou lie with what? Any beast to defile thyself with. In other words, homosexuality is akin to a human being having intercourse with an animal. Should a human being have intercourse with a horse or a relationship with a cow? Should it have that? Yes or no? What would you say if you knew that was happening? That's what? Nasty. Why? Because it is what? Unnatural. That's not how God made us in nature. 
So my brothers and sisters, but notice what the Bible calls that. It says, neither shall any woman do what? Stand before a what? Now, see, when you understand, this is literal. But when you understand it, you'll even understand spiritually. Now, Babylon is a woman that is doing what? Riding a beast in a sexual connotation. Because it says she commits what? Fornication. Now, my brothers and sisters, watch what the Bible says. What is that called? It says, neither shall any woman stand before a beast to lie down there and two. It is, talk to me somebody, confusion. So whenever a nation becomes so confused that it no longer understands the natural God-given order of life, you are watching a civilization that is getting ready to collapse. Do you understand? Yes or no? Yes. Now, my brothers and sisters, what does, uh, 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 what does Babylon mean? At the Tower of Babel, the language was confounded. It means confusion. Am I right? Yes. Now, question. The second angel, after the first angel says, worship him who made heaven. In other words, following God and the one who made nature and the natural things. Then the second angel says, Babylon is what? Fallen. fallen. Give me another name for fallen. Collapse. Babylon. What does Babylon mean? Confusion. What does confusion lead to? Talk to me. Fallen or collapse. So any time a nation or a denomination becomes so confused that it does not understand the natural God-given order of life, it's the next stage is for it to collapse. Are you following me? Now, my brothers and sisters, look what the Bible says. When the nation came to that way, the pagan nations in Leviticus 18, notice what the Bible says in 24, verse 24, Defile not ye yourselves in any of these things, for in all these the nations are defiled which I cast out before you. And the land is defiled. Therefore, I do visit the iniquity thereof upon it. So God's judgments fall upon the nation as a result of it reaching this condition. Are you understanding? And then what happens to their time frame on planet Earth? Look at the very next part of that sentence. It says, and what? There up, it says, if, and the land itself does what? Leviticus 18.25. Leviticus and the land itself vomited out her inhabitants. What does it mean? It cast her out of being in a position of power. See, the Canaanites were in the land, but because they were practicing these things, it came to a place where they reached their limit and God had to push them out and put his people in until they followed the exact same practices. So my brothers and sisters, any time in history, when you see a nation that's become so confused that it's forgotten its natural God-given order of life, you are looking at a nation so confused it's getting ready to fall and collapse. Then question, what would happen? If I looked in the United States of America and saw a nation that had become so confused that now it has lost the natural God-given order of life. What would I know about America if I saw that America? What would I know about America? What would I know? I would know it's about to collapse without looking at any numbers. So my brothers and sisters, the question is, someone said, I thought you were studying here. I'm telling you, I'm studying here right now. We're studying here, I promise you. <laughs> now, my brother says so not so, 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 but remember, you've got to look at the end in order to understand what's really happening at the beginning. So now as we look at this, we're talking about Babylonian confusion, this collapse. Now, my question was, looking at this collapsing of, of what's going on, what, how can I ask that? What would make that happen to the degree the, in America, what, what would, that's the question. What would be the primary, thank you, Lord, what would be the primary order, natural order of life? When we look at life, because anything that's God-given order of life, anytime you confuse it or reverse it, it messes up. But what is the foundation? What is the basic primary order of life? Because then you can actually look at something in America. Are you, are you understand what I'm saying? Without, if you just say this, you don't know what to look at. But we should be able to see something to understand where we are. Now, my brothers and sisters, what is the basic primary? What does primary mean? What do you mean by primary? First. So, do you know, the order of life has been set up. There's a first uh, unit of life. Yes. Talk to me. Male and female. Let's see that. Let's see it from the Bible. Go to Genesis. Go to Genesis 1. Go to Genesis 1. 
When God made earth naturally, he's setting up a God given order. And he says, let us make man in our what? Talk to me. Own image. Our image. Then notice what it says. Genesis 1. We're going to pick up. And we're going to pick up verse 27. Let's just, let's just jump in there. You put in your notes 26, the image of God. Now we're going to read 27 together. It says, so God did what? Talk to me. Created man in his own image. And the image of God created he him. How? Male and female did what? So the basis of life on earth was developed out of the binary concept of what? Male and female. Now watch. When was the earth ever destroyed? Was the earth ever destroyed? When? In the flood. Did God want to preserve life? When God wanted to preserve life, how did he do it? Genesis chapter 6. Genesis 6. Genesis chapter 6. Look what the Bible says. Verse 13. Genesis 6, 13. The Bible says, man, the Bible is deep. Are you following me, brothers and sisters? Watch this thing now. In Genesis 6, 13, the Bible says, and God said unto Noah, the end, we're looking at the end, of all flesh has come before me. For the earth is filled with what? We want to know why the earth is filled with violence. Through them, and behold, I will do what? Destroy them how? Look at the text. Look at the text. I will destroy them with the earth. Now jump down to verse 17. Let's see. The world's going to be destroyed. But look what the Bible says. Let's jump down now to verse, uh, 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 I said 17, 18. But with thee will I establish my covenant. I'm talking about Noah and his family. And thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy sons and thy wife and thy sons wise with thee. Now, let's read verse 19 slowly with understanding. Verse 19, what does it say? And of... Was, just, was this just Adam and Eve? No. How many bases of life? How much part of life is it talking about? Every. So it says, now watch now. It says, and of every living thing of all flesh, two of every sort. Now, what does that sound like, sort? Okay, if I, take, if I, have, if I mix everything together and I, put, I start sorting this over here and this over here, what am I doing? When I'm classing something, though, what am I doing to, you know, in science, they talk about having class and foul and, and families. But what are you doing? You're assigning, you're assigning what? Order. Order. If you're in clothes and all the clothes are together, your, your shorts are together, your shirts are together and all these things are together. That's not order. But then you begin to sort them into its particular kind and its kind. You are making what? Order. This is a natural God given order. Now, watch what the Bible says. It says, and thou shalt come, uh, uh, verse uh, 19, two of every sort shall I bring into the ark. Why? Why? To keep them how? So in order to preserve life. Is that simple? <laughs> in order to preserve life, it says to keep them alive. And then we'll look at that last part. It says, they shall be what? Talk to me. Male, Male and what? So the sort the order that preserves life is what? Talk to me, somebody. Male and female. God himself, though he can work miracles, he follows this natural God-given order. So now, what would be the confusion that would have to come in the last days to cause the life on earth to become extinct? A confusion of what? Talk to me, somebody. Male and female. And what is that call? Gender. Identity. Now I want to ask you a question. In America, do we see a gender crisis? Yes. In the world, do we see a gender crisis? Between male and female, they call it transgender. Trans. A cross, like transgression. Do you know that the only way to get a transgender, you have to step over the order that God has set up. Now, my brothers and sisters, does God love the transgressor? Yes. What is he called? A sinner. How many of us are sinners? All. Does God love the transgender? Yes. How many? All. Do you know that in a sense, all of us are transgender? Because we were not made now in the way that God made us. We were made in the image of God, holy. But when we sinned, we transgendered to become unholy. 
Now, my brothers and sisters, so all of us are in the same boat. And the only one that can take us off is Jesus Christ. Now, my brothers and sisters, so this is not something to hate someone who understands this, but it's to show that we are confused. And what is needed is not condemnation, but what? Education. If a man's confused on the math problem, you don't just beat him over the head. You don't understand, pow, pow, pow. <laughs> you educate him on the laws of math. And so likewise today, if someone, you and I or anyone else is confused, no need for condemnation, but for an education on the on natural God-given order of life. Do you understand? So now my brothers and sisters, this is to preserve life. So question, in America, how is it right now? Where the rainbow, you know what it's talking about rainbow? What, and it's a shame that the, the, the person who used this, but what has been likened to the LGBT? What symbol has been used for that? A rainbow. Well, you ever wonder where is it end? It ends in collapse. Now look, human given institute. Where the rainbow ends, what did they, what did they say? The collapse of civilization. Every field of knowledge. He spent nine years researching how civilizations what? This man is an expert on how civilizations collapse and decline. He's not looking for something. He's just studying what happens to a nation when it goes down. And you know what he found out? That's where the rainbow ends. In other words, that's where the confusion of gender, LGBT, that confusion, that's where it ends. Now, my brothers and sisters, it ends at that collapse because we don't understand the order of life that is natural and what else? Talk to me. God get it. What is the natural order of life? He made them what? Male and? Question. So because God understood this. Now, do you know that? <laughs> okay, but now. Oh, but listen, listen. Do you understand? I'm going to put, put an equation on the board. Order. No, I'm, 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 I'm going to do it. Yeah, I'll do it. Order. Peace. Confusion. What is, what is confusion? The lack of? Order. War. That's a biblical equation. Now, so if I'm going to get a civil war in a country, what would have to happen first? Confusion. If I'm going to get an international war, what would have to happen? Confusion. Now, let's check and see if that's a biblical equation. Is that all right? Is that all right? Let's check and say that's a biblical equation. Let's go in our Bibles to James chapter 4. Watch. Now watch. We're going to find out that not just war, but every evil. How much, that, how much does every evil take in? How much does every evil take in? That's everything. Now, we're going to find this is the equation for war and every evil. Look at what the Bible says in James chapter 4. James chapter 4. Look at what it says. This is so significant. We're talking about hair. Well, I, I don't know how, how we're going to get to it, but we're talking about it. <laughs> look at James 4. James 4. Now, I, do you understand? I, I want to tell you, I can't, just, I can't just rush through it. You understand? I'm trying to give it to you, now, but we, 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 we're at the heart. We're at the heart. James 4. Verse 1. Let's pick it up now. Verse 1. James 4, verse 1. And watch the question, the inspired question. James 4, verse 1. Let's read that together. Are we there? Amen. Who will read this for us? Let's see. My brother. What's your name, my brother? Would you mind reading for us? James 4, verse 1. What does it say? Thank you. Now, I'm, I'm going to stop you in between. It says, from whence come what? War. So it's asking what brings war on the earth. Continue. So he says, what comes, and he asks for two things. He said, what comes war and what else? Fighting. Now, I'm going to tell you something, too. This is also why there's fighting in the church. And fighting in the home. Now, has there been a fight in the church over women's ordination? Yes. Do you know that the same thing of hair is the same understanding of this right here? We're all dealing with the same thing. It's the same thing. Now, we're going to continue. And this is what the Apostle Paul was trying to clear up. Now, let's, let's back up because James 4 is the conclusion of his teaching from something earlier. So let's back up to James 3. And understand the equation. Let's understand the equation from James 3. Now let's pick up in verse uh, uh, 14. In James 3 verse 14. Let's pick up there. The Bible says in verse 14. It says. But if you what? Have bitter envyings and strife in your hearts. 
Glory not and lie not against the truth. Verse 15. Why? This wisdom descendeth not from above. It's not heavenly. But he is talking to me somebody earthly. What else? Sensual. What else? Devilish. Now watch the devil's plan. Verse 16. For where envying and strife is, there is, talk to me somebody, confusion. Now watch now. There's confusion and what else? So if, what is the foundation of every evil? What is the foundation of every evil? Talk to me somebody. Confusion. Confusion. Now notice what the Bible says, continue on. Verse 17, uh, verse 17 says, but the wisdom that is from above, different wisdom, is first pure and then what? Wait a minute now. So confusion did not have any peace. I'm suggesting to you, though, that the order of heaven had peace where hell had confusion. Someone says, but I thought you are we not stretching to get this? Can we see confusion and war? Yes or no? Let's go to Isaiah nine. And let's see if we can get it clearly. Both the New Testament and the Old Testament teach the same thing. Look at Isaiah chapter 9. And notice this prophecy concerning the prince of not of war, but the prince of peace. Notice this prophecy concerning Christ, the Messiah, the prince of peace. Look at Isaiah chapter 9. We want to pick up in verse 5. Isaiah 9 verse 5. Watch this now. The Bible is so good. Man, this is good. Look at Isaiah 9, verse 5. I got to read it with you. I can't let you read this by yourself. Let's read it together now. Isaiah 9, verse 5 says, For every... What's the next word? Now, when I'm dealing with battle, peace or war? Every battle of the warrior is with what? Confused noise. So, my brothers and sisters, what goes together? In the equation, what goes together? Confusion and what? War. Let's continue. The warriors with confused noise and garments rolled in blood, bloodshed. But this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. Verse 6. But there's someone else now. For unto us, talk to me somebody, a child is born. Unto us a son is given and the government shall be where? Upon his shoulder and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of peace not war but peace now notice how peace comes verse 7 it says and of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it we have a biblical equation now what is the biblical equation order produces peace confusion produces war so if we have a civil war in America, what must come first? Confusion. And what is the basic principle of the confusion must be about in life? What is the basic principle? Talk to me, somebody. Male and female. So before I see a civil war in America, I must see gender confusion. And once I see gender confusion, I know that I'm right upon the civil war that is going to collapse the nation and make it come to an end. So now, my brothers and sisters, the question would only be in 2023, do we see both gender confusion and the rise of a civil war? Yes or no? Yes. We see both. Anytime you see in history where a civilization has become so confused that it can no longer understand the natural God given order of life, you are looking at a civilization or nation that is about to collapse. Is that biblical? Yes or no? Yes. We see it. 2023. You can't see it, but I'm going to show you. New York Times report reveals sharp rise in what? transgender young people in the U.S. This says, and this is 2022, it says the number of young people who identify as transgender has nearly what? Double. Doubled in recent years. Now, what does that tell us in, in recent years, if, it, if the transgender number has doubled, what does that tell us has happened? If there's been a transgender, then there's been a rise in a what? Confusion on the gender of male and female. They have actually developed a, 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 a name for the so-called uh, 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 condition uh, when this happens. They call it gender uh, de dysphoric. Pew Research, 2013. 2013. Americans' attitudes about what? Gays and lesbians have changed dramatically over the past decade or so. 
and the LGBT adults are accurately aware of this. These changing attitudes have meant that LGBT adults feel more accepted by society now than in the what? So has it always been this way? So this change, whenever you see a nation predominantly that has now embraced and accepted this change in this confused idea of the God-given order of life, you're looking at a civilization that's, that's not on the way up, but a civilization that's on the way down. down. Babylon is fallen. Confusion falls into war and to decay. Anarchy, lawlessness is seeking to sweep away all law and order. U.S. attitude toward lesbian gay people are better than ever. Better than what? The year was 1955. This is in 2016. The year was 1955. Police routinely raided lesbian gay bars, arresting patrons and publishing their names and addresses in the paper. It was, a, it was terrible. Sex between two women, two women, uh, two men and two women were what? Illegal. And homosexuality was understood by psychiatrists to be a mental illness. In 2008, Phyllis and Dale were married by San Francisco Mayor Gavin Newsom. You may never, may never heard of him before. Celebrating the newly established right of same-sex marriage. They were the first lesbian couple to marry in what? San Francisco, 2008. So now something in 2008 happens. You'll find if you start studying history, economically, historically, things happen on, on the same page. Now, but it says, together for 56 years, the legal status of their marriage was settled, uh, 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 their marriage was settled just this year by the U.S. The U.S. Is there something being dealt with in the nation right now in the Supreme Court? What's being dealt with right now? The Sabbath. But what came first? This gay marriage. Remember the counterfeit twins? My, 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 I, I, so we, you, we never can forget it, my sister. <laughs> but now, 2008. So what, what, what happened in the Constitution? What happened in the Supreme Court that actually cemented this decision? What happened? You know what happened. That same-sex marriage became a law. That, that there was this, this, this uh, gender confusion accelerated. We've got a new attitude. It's not only policies that are changing. Our attitudes toward lesbian and gay people are undergoing rapid change over time as well. The U.S. General Social Survey began asking Americans about their attitudes toward lesbian and gay people in the early what? A large majority of Americans judged sexual relations between two adults of the same sex. How? Very harshly. With about 85% indicating that this was morally what? So this tells us that in, back in the uh, 1980s that the majority of America was not confused over the issue of the gender. Am I right? Yes. Not that everything that they were doing is right, but there was no confusion as to the gender. But now watch. Since 1990, however, attitudes have what? Shifted dramatically. By 2014, about what? Half of all respondents tell us that same-sex marriage relationships are not wrong. wrong. Where? So it moved now from 85 being against it to now about what? 50%. Now, if you have 50%, you, you still uh, you can't fully do what you need to do. The nation is not fully there of collapse because you can go any way. Are you following? You have to have a majority, predominant. That's 2014. Any Supreme Court law in 2014? No. But something happened in 2015. This is. Let me paint that up. I want to go through that exact order. This says America is changing how it views accepting gay and lesbian people. New polls reveal. The percentage of Americans who say they are satisfied with the acceptance of gay and lesbian people in the country has reached a new peak of 62 percent, according to the poll on what? Wednesday. Now, this is 2022. So that by 2022, we're no longer at 50 percent. We're where? Where are we now? But what is that now? That's not half now. That's what? So now we are now in history where every other nation has been when they collapsed. This is the way of Babylon. This is the way to meet a Persian. This was the way of Greece. This was the way of Rome. And this is the way of the United States of America. You see it. Obama defends what? Transgender bathroom. You remember this? 
First you had this, that was male, uh, male, that was what? Female, well, what's that? That's gender confusion. God designed that there should be a plain distinction between the dress of men and women. So in order to blur the line or the distinction between male and female, Satan has done many things. One of them was to make them dress the same so that you could not distinguish a male from a female in dress. I wonder if hair is a part of this. Are you with me? Has God given anatomical things to define the difference between male and female? Yes or no? Has he given anatomical things? Tell me an anatomical thing that defines a male and a female. He said uterus, the reproductive system. The reproductive system is one of the things that God has given to distinguish a male from a what? Female. Do you know that God has given both things in attitude? I'm using the paper, but, uh, Elder. <laughs> attitude and what else? Anatomy. There are anatomical things that def define male and female that help to distinguish. And there are also attitude things. What is one of the things uh, in attitude? What is one of the things in attitude? Go to Jeremiah. Let's go there quickly. Jeremiah, so we don't, we go quickly. Jeremiah. Jeremiah, Heavenly Father, as we get ready to bring out some final points, help us in these final moments to put this together. Guide us, Lord, to show us that we're at the very end of the very end and we're not ready, but we can be if we come to you, Lord, and let you make us holy. Please bless us. In Jesus' name, amen. Look what the Bible says, Jeremiah 48. Jeremiah 48, look what the Bible says in Jeremiah 48. And we're going to begin in 41. I'm going to see if you catch one of the general, one of the things in attitudes. Uh, difference between a male and a female, how God designed. Jeremiah 40, and the, the attitude difference is, is to help with the role, what the role, what the function of the person is to carry out, whether male or female. Verse 41. Let's read verse 41 together. It says, Kiriath is what? Taken. And the strongholds are surprised. And the mighty men's heart in Moab at that day shall be as the heart of a woman in her pains. It's suggesting something right here. That there's a difference between what? What is the difference between, talk to me somebody. A man's heart and a woman's heart. What do you think it's talking about? Anybody know what it's talking about? Okay, well you don't seem like you, 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 you I'm going to tell you displaying one of the traits, right? <laughs> Let's go to Isaiah. We, we, we'll let the Bible tell us so you don't have to be afraid to, to say it. Isaiah 19. What does let the Bible tell us? Isaiah 19. Isn't it, a, isn't, it, listen, isn't it a blessing when you don't have to make up anything? Where everything you believe is in the word of God. You don't have to say one word, line upon line, text upon text. All seven Adventism is, is the religion of the Bible. Look what the Bible says in Isaiah 19. And we want to see what the, the difference, uh, uh, how, what is the woman's heart like? It's, it said the man's heart will be like that of the woman's heart. Let's see if we can get a difference between the hearts. Verse 16. Let's see a woman's heart. Verse 16. Let's read verse 16. It says, in that day shall Egypt be what? Like how? Unto a woman. And it shall be what? Afraid and fear because of the shaking of the hand of the Lord of hosts, which he shaketh over it. So one of the one of the general attributes and attitudes that God wants to develop in a male a man to distinguish him is that he should have what? Talk to me, somebody. He should have courage, more courage than his female counterpart. Now, I want to ask you a question. If you get to a house, and you're in the country, and all of a sudden a spider comes out, and the woman says, ah! You say, nothing wrong with that. But all of a sudden, if a brother comes out and says, Whoa! You say, oh, no, 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 no. You're acting like a girl. Mouse come running by, female jumps on top of the couch. You say, it's all right, I'll take care of you. I'll protect you. I will protect you. But if all of a sudden now, wife jumps on the couch, you jump back on her too, and you jump back on her, and oh, because of the mouse, something is wrong. 
Because how can you as a husband then be the protector? Remember last time I gave you illustration, man come to the door, brother Bill, and they trying to rob the house and you push out the wife. Not, not, brother, I'm telling you, you know what I'm saying, somebody push out the wife and you, you say, well, well, I did, I, I, that was my little way. You could, you, you could deal with that. I, I, you, that's fearful. Does God do that to us? No. He protects us. And so we can see that there's a difference between male and female, biblically, in attitude. What about in anatomy? Is there a difference? We can look at text. I don't want to go through the text now. I want to go somewhere else. You, but you know, the, the, the Bible actually talks about the reproductive organs different from man and woman when you study the Bible, anatomically. I wonder, I wonder if hair, well, first let me ask this. If you're going to study anatomy, is hair a part of the anatomy? I wonder if hair is one of the anatomical things that God designed to distinguish male and female. And if the devil wanted to collapse a nation and bring a civil war, what must he do? Confuse the nation on the difference between what? Male and female. Thus confuse them on how to wear the hair. But Satan is not interested in the hair. He's interested in reversing God's order. Do you understand? Now let's go to 1 Corinthians. Now we're here. We're going to get ready to bring it to a close. Now look what it says. God designed there should be a plain distinction. Rome fell due to the rise of what? Homosexuality. This is what an expert in history says. It was this confusion that caused the fall of Rome. Where are the Roman ends of class? I can't go through now. I believe you see it biblically. I believe you think, I believe you can see it in the nation itself. I believe it's clear. Anytime you see in history where civilization has become so confused, they can no longer understand the natural God-given order of life. You are looking at a civilization or nation that is about to what? Talk to me. Collapse. Did it happen to Babylon, Medio Persia, Greece, Rome? Is it happening right now? But you know that it did not start with just a nation collapsing. It started somewhere else that we thought looked cute, like that blue nose pit bull. But you got to look at the end first. When you see a nation collapse and a family collapse, and do you know that the destruction of the male and female destroys the order of the family? And God says that we must set our house in order. Now, my brothers and sisters, this is what has been lost. Now, let's go quickly to 1 Corinthians 11. First, are, you in there? are you there already? In 1 Corinthians 11. No. Here's the order. How should we wear our hair? This says throughout history, most men have worn their hair what? Short. But is there a biblical reason for this? What does the Bible say about men having what? Long hair. And someone says, what does this have to do with holiness? What does it have to do with holiness? I'm going to pass on that right now. Let's read this together. Heavenly Places, page 33. Let's read it together. <laughs> I'm looking at Brother Peters. <laughs> Heavenly Places, page 33. What is, uh, talk to me, Micah. Close your eyes and talk to me. All right. Amen. Where? Heavenly places, paragraph three. Oh, page three, paragraph four. Page three. Praise the Lord. All right. Let's read together. Holiness is what? Constant agreement. We're talking about holiness heals hair. So in order to be holy, I have to agree with God about my hair. What if I disagree with God? about how to wear my hair. At that point, I cease to be holy. How do I know it's not once holiness, always holiness? Constant agreement with God. So now, my brothers and sisters, that tells me then, if I'm going to be protected and married to God, He must make me of His kind, make me holy. But if I do not agree with God on everything, whether it's diet or dress or music or worship, then I'm not holy. Now, agreeing with God doesn't save me. Jesus saves me. Agreement with God puts me in a position to be in a relationship with God where he can save me. It allows me to enter into a saving relationship with my Lord. Because two cannot walk together except they be agreed. Amos 3 and verse 3. Now, it's easy to remember. Amos what? 3.3. 3, like heavenly places, 33. And paragraph Four. Uh, while we cling to him who gave himself for us, we are safe. We can be protected, safe, if we're holy. So, does hair have anything to do with holiness, yes or no? If I agree with God, 
I'm on the way of holiness. What if I disagree with God? I'm no longer holy. Does God speak of hair? Yes or no? Yes. Revelation. Uh, I said 1 Corinthians. Go to Revelation 9. We'll come to 1 Corinthians in just a moment as we get ready to close. Revelation 9. Go to Revelation 9 quickly. Revelation 9. Revelation 9 tells us that God shows us there is a distinction between the hair of a man and the hair of a woman. The Bible is clear. You can study this from Genesis to Revelation. In Revelation chapter 9, just as he made male and female in Genesis 1 and distinguished them, so in Revelation 9, he helps to see that part of that distinguishing was the hair. Revelation 9, verse 7. In the uh, seven trumpets, in the fifth trumpet, God begins to talk about this. Verse 7. Let's read verse 7. Revelation 9, verse 7. It says, And the shapes of the locusts were like unto what? Horses prepared unto what? Battle. War. And on their heads were as it were crowns like gold, and their faces were as the faces of what? Men. So they had fa you can have a face like a man. Then the Bible says in verse 8, And they had what? Hair. How? As the hair of a... What does that tell us? What does that tell us? Talk to me somebody. That there is a way that a woman has hair that is different from that of a man. Biblically. Now that doesn't tell you what it is though. It just says that there's a difference between the hair of a man and, and the hair of a woman. There's just a difference. And so my brother and sister, what we had to go through in the Bible because there's different, and that was made to help us see the distinction between man and woman, male and female. What happens? Do you think that it could be a young boy who someone looks at and thinks it's a girl? You think it's possible? Yes. Do you think it's possible to have a little girl that someone looks at and thinks it's a boy? Yes. Is it possible? Are there things that we can do to help distinguish? If we believe in the Bible and believe in God, should we do them? Because God himself thinks this way. He is the one who sorted us, male and female. Now, 1 Corinthians 11 tells us what the distinction of male hair and female hair is. 1 Corinthians 11. Revelation 9 told us there was. 1 Corinthians 11 tells us exactly what that distinction is. Are we there? 1 Corinthians 11? Verse 14. Let's go look at verse 14. Let's read that together. 1 Corinthians 11 and verse 14. What does the Bible say? It says, doth not what? Talk to me, somebody. Yes. Now, I hope your eyes are lighting up now. Everything in the Bible. It says, does not even, even what? Yes. Now, remember now, what happens when a nation is getting ready to reach civilization, uh, about to reach its limit? They become confused on what? The natural God-given order of life. So 1 Corinthians 11 says, now interesting enough, you know what Corinth was? You know what Corinth was? This is, this is the inhabitants of Greece. Do you know that they were confused as to male and female in Greece? And God is writing to the church in Corinth to explain that the pagan Grecian Roman world did not understand this, but his people should. And so look at what this says. The Bible says in verse 14, Doth not even nature itself teach you? That if a man have long hair, it is a what? Shame. So this begins to tell us that in God's plan, the man's hair should what? The man's hair, I'm going to put, let me, let me make that a little smaller. <laughs> I want to do something else right there. The man's hair should be sh uh, shorter than the woman's hair. Then the Bible says in verse 15. But if a what? Woman have long hair. So it's telling her, well, if a man has long hair, it's a shame. It's not a shame for a woman to have longer hair. So now we can see that a woman's hair is to be what? Longer than a man's hair. So we can see the principle that man's hair should be shorter and woman's hair should be longer Based on what? Based on what? Based on what? Nature. What's teaching? What's teaching? Nature. So then the hair naturally, the way God wants us to do it naturally, should have the man shorter and the woman what? Longer. Now, that's clear from the Bible. But a person said, well, that's not what Paul was talking about. You're not in the context of the Apostle Paul. This is the Pauline epistle. I don't know if you know scholarship, but this is what they would say. But the Bible is very simple to understand. 
if you just take the time to just read it with the Lord and again and again saying, Lord, I want to agree with whatever you teach me. You know that God did not intend that only the Pope should understand and interpret the Bible and that only a priest should be able to understand and interpret the Bible and that only a minister or a pastor should be able to interpret the Bible. You know that God wanted that every one of us could study and show ourselves approved unto God. A workman that he not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth without any specialized education, but the simple one of studying the Bible line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little and there a little, under the control of the Holy Spirit. With a heart that wanted to agree with God, whatever he taught. Not my tradition, not my custom, not what my church says, not what the society says, but what does God say? I want to be holy to marry, to have a relationship with God. Is that what you want? That's what I want. Now, my brothers and sisters... If you look back at the Bible, what was 1 Corinthians? Let, let us just review quickly scholarship in the principle. What was the context of 1 Corinthians 11? Two things. What was the context of 1 Corinthians 11? You will find the context was two things. Number one, headship. What was the first thing? Headship. headship. Second, order. Interesting. First is what? Headship. Second is what? Order. By headship, we studied the verses. I'm not going to go back to all the verses. But what was headship? What do we st- when we studied that from the Bible, what was headship? What was it talking about? Headship was dealing with authority. And give me another word. Authority. Well, let's go to Colossians. Let's just look at one text. Let's look at one text. I was, I was expecting for you to just scream it out to me, you know. Col- look, at, look at Colossians. Colossians chapter 2. Look what the Bible says in Colossians chapter 2. We'll pick up there. Colossians 2 and verse 9. Colossians 2 and verse 9. Let's read that together. The Bible says in Colossians 2 and verse 9 and 10, it says, For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead, how? Bodily. Verse 10. And ye are what? Complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. So when you deal with headship, you're dealing with authority. And what else? Talk to me, somebody. Power. That's another way of saying leadership. The one who is the leader is the one who has authority and power. And you're going to find out that this is later on what the devil uses in the Babylonian confused church to unite church and state. The state is supposed to have the power and the church is supposed to have the religion. But what you find is confusion takes place and the church begins to control the state. It's a confused system. It's the wrong order. The order was never that the church controls the state. That was never God's order. But you will find that, and that's why in Revelation 13 it says the dragon gave him his power, his seat, and great authority. And that America would exercise all of the power of the first beast. So when you go through, it's the same concept. But you see, headship is dealing with authority, power, leadership. Then order. Now, my brothers and sisters, does the Bible in 1 Corinthians 11 show us that very clearly? Let's see that. 1 Corinthians 11. How do we know that the thought is headship? At the verse 1, it says, follow me as I follow Christ. Verse 2 tells us to follow all the teachings I'm giving you. Verse 3 introduces. Verse 3. Let's read verse 3. It says, but I would have you know. What would you have us know, Paul? Apostle. That the head of every man is Christ. And the head of the woman is the man. And the head of Christ is God. It's not necessarily simply Christ, God, and man. He's dealing with headship. And so the context is, you must understand something about the head in order to understand hair. Where does hair grow out of? The head. So we have to understand the head to understand hair. And that's what the apostle is teaching. There's something about hair that helps us understand headship. And so then, not only is it dealing with headship or leadership or authority or power, it's dealing with order. How do I know it's dealing with order? Verse 8. Verse 8. 1 Corinthians 11, verse 8. Verse 8 says, for the man is not of the woman, but the woman where? What's he mean when he says the man is not of the woman, but the woman is of the man? What's he mean? He means that man was created first. If I say A, B, C, what comes first? C, D, or E? A. What do you call that? Alphabetical order. I say one, two, three. What is one? Was I'm going two and three. That's numerical. So I'm dealing when I deal with first and numbers. I'm dealing with order. Look at 1 Timothy. We'll come right back here. 1 Timothy 2. 1 Timothy 2. And notice what the Bible says in 1 Timothy. All the T's are together. And look at what it says in 1 Timothy chapter 2 
And look at what the Bible says in 1 Timothy 2, and we're going to look at what it says very carefully in 1 Timothy 2, and we're going to look at verse 12. 1 Timothy 2 and verse 12. Look, look at what the Bible says. Are you there? Amen. 1 Timothy 2 verse 12. What does the Bible say? It says, but I suffer not a woman to what? Teach, nor to usurp what? Now remember, what is being dealt with? Headship, authority, power, leadership. It says authority over the man, but to be in silence. In other words, to be silence of teaching when she's usurping authority. Verse 13. Why? For, because, for Adam was first formed than Eve. First. What am I dealing with? Order. So what I'm seeing is, in the Bible, order and authority connect. So you see, headship, order, authority, power, leadership is direct connection with order. So in 1 Corinthians 11, let's go back quickly. In 1 Corinthians 11, what two things are really being dealt with? Talk to me, somebody. The real study is not here. That's not the real study. The real study is what? Headship and order. That's the real issue. In a home, guess what the real issue is? The, real, the issue in the home is not money. It's headship and order. Guess what the issue is in the church? It's not women's ordination. And guess what it is? Headship and order. Guess what the issue is in life? Headship and order. Guess what the issue is over the seal of God and the mark of the beast? I must obey the head rather than man. It's order, authority. The Sabbath is a sign of God's authority. So now, my brothers and sisters, what does the fourth commandment say? Remember the Sabbath to keep it. Holy. We're talking about holiness. Holiness. Now, go back to 1 Corinthians 11. Look at what the Bible says now. What is 1 Corinthians 11? What is the context then? Talk to me. What is the context? Headship and? Now, do you know that this is what almost the entire book of Corinthians is about? Look at, let's just pursue. Look at 1 Corinthians 11. Jump down to the last verse of 34. Same chapter, last verse. What does it say in the last verse of 34? It says, if any man do what? Hunger. Let him eat at home. In other words, don't come to church and do all the eating there. You know? <laughs> then it says, that ye come not together unto condemnation. And the rest will I, talk to me somebody, set where? In order. When? When I come. So what was he doing in Corinth? What was he doing? Setting things where? In order. Chapter 14. Look at chapter 14. Look at verse 32, uh, 33. Chapter 14, verse 33. First Corinthians 14, verse 33. What does the Bible say in verse 33? It says, for God is not the author of confusion, but of, remember that, remember order, peace, confusion, war. Not the, uh, uh, not the author of confusion, but of peace as in how many churches? All churches of the saints. Verse 40. Let all things be done how? Decently and in I could continue through chapter 15 in, in, in 1 Corinthians 16. He talks about when you collect the offering on the first day of the week, have it in order when I come. You go through the book. What he's setting up is headship in order. So back in 1 Corinthians 11, the real issue is not hair. What is the real issue? Talk to me, somebody. Headship and order. But now hair plays in when we understand it. Hair plays in when we understand it. Uh, hair plays in when we understand it. Look at what it says now in 1 Corinthians Chapter First uh, Corinthians, chapter eleven. My time is gone, brothers and sisters. This thing is so serious. Let me close here. Let me close here. Let me close here. Man, woman. Well, what's the issue of headship? As we get ready to go, Heavenly Father, please, in these last couple of minutes. We cannot finish, but we see a foundation, Lord, that shows us we're at the very end of time. This is the reason for every other problem in the home, the church, in the world, in society, in the civilization, in the nation, in our own lives. Please, Lord, help us. In Jesus' name, amen. Can we see how serious this is, yes or no? Now listen. 1 Corinthians 11, 4. Every man, because of headship, Praying or prophesying, having his head, what? Covered, dishonors his head. So this tells us that the problem is when man, because he's head, when man does what? Covers his head. Because remember, God's dealing with the headship and order of heaven and the headship and order of the earth. In heaven, it says God is the head of Christ. That's the 
headship and order of heaven. The Father, the first person of the Godhead. The Son, the second person of the Godhead. The Holy Spirit, third person of the Godhead. So now we see on earth the order is following the structure of heaven. So now it says man, when he covers his head, what does he do? I mean, man, I, I'm, I'm trying to write a little smaller. When man covers, when man covers his head, what is it? What is it? Dishonor. What is another name for dishonor? Shame. How do you know that? How do you know that shame is the, is the same as dishonor? How do you know that? Now, we are not in Arm Training Institute. <laughs> We're not in Minister Training Institute. We're in what? Bible, Bible Training Institute. Does the Bible tell us that shame and dishonor are together? Yes. Where? Psalm 69. Let's go there quickly. Go there quickly. Psalm 69. Psalm 69. Look what the Bible says. In Psalm 69. And look at what it says in verse 19. In Psalm 69 and verse 19. What does the Bible say? The Bible says in Psalm 69, 19. Thou hast known my what? Reproach. And my shame. And my dishonor my adversaries are all before thee what does the bible show us that dishonor is the same as what talk to me somebody shame now do you know that there's something that goes with shame look at psalms 35 psalms 35 look what the bible says in psalms 35 in psalms 35 verse 26 psalms 35 verse 26 psalms 35 verse 26 what is with this shame honor dishonor shame Verse 26 says, yes, verse 26 says, let them be what? Ashamed and brought to confusion together that rejoice at mine hurt. Let them be clothed with shame and dishonor that magnify themselves against me. You see Satan's plan in confusing brings dishonor and what? Now, is shame associated with glory or is shame associated with sin? How do you know? See, this, our class is the teachers. Everything we believe, we base it where? Base it where? On the Bible. Does the Bible say so? Because if we agree with God, that's holiness. Hosea 4. Look at what the Bible says in Hosea 4. Hosea, after Daniel. After Daniel, we come to the book of Hosea and we can com complete the equation. Hosea 4 and verse 7. Hosea 4 and verse 7, after Daniel, Hosea 4 and verse 7. Let's read that together. Hosea 4 verse 7. The Bible says in verse 7, as uh, Hosea 4 verse 7. All right, we're there. Praise the Lord. Let's read that together. What does the Bible say? As they were increased, so they, so they what? So they what? So they sinned against me. What did that sin do? Therefore will I change their glory into so what changes glory into shame? Sin. So now it says when man covers his head, he dishonors God. He's in shame and confusion. And it, this is a result not of glory, but it's a result of what? Talk to me, somebody. Sin. So when a man covers his head, is it connected with glory or is it connected with sin? Sin. Connected with God's church or with confusion? Confusion. Now, my brothers and sisters, the Bible says the first angel, fear God, give glory to him. For the hour of his judgment has come. So in the hour of judgment in the most holy place, then the holiness of hair would suggest that I wear it like a man and not cover my head. And a woman, what should she do? What does the Bible say for her? First Corinthians 11 verse, uh, uh, the Bible tells her what it means. And first Corinthians 11, the Bible tells her in first Corinthians 11 and verse uh, five In first Corinthians 11 and verse five, it says, but every woman. That prayeth or prophesieth with her head, what? Now, do you notice immediately the man is to not cover his head, but the woman is to what? Showing us that their roles are distinct and different. So in verse 5, it says that she, the woman, should do what? Talk to you. What does it say? She should what? what well, not what she should. I'm, I'm, I'm explaining the, the connection. It says for her, but every woman that prayeth or prophesieth uh, with her head, what? So when the woman uncovers her head 
What is the result? Glory? She does what? Dishonoreth her head. So we see the same equation. Man covers his head, he dishonors. He shames confusion because of sin. If a woman uncovers her head, she dishonors and brings confusion. What else? She brings confusion. What else? Shame. And the Bible says so. I mean, you just keep reading. It says here, in, 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 going on in verse uh, 5, it says, uh, Prostate with her hair uncovered, dishonor for her head, for that is even all one as if she were shaven. Verse 6, for if the woman be not covered, let her also be shorn. But if it be, but if it be a what? Shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven, let her be what? So it's clear when a woman uncovers her head, it produces dishonor or shame, which does not bring glory, but it brings what? Sin. This confusion, when a woman does not cover her head, it confuses the issue. When a man covers his head, it does what? Confuses the issue. So the question is, what does it mean? What is the covering of the head? You remember we talked about it. Some uh, churches would think it was a shawl. A prayer shawl that you put on or some hat or some cap that you put on. But there's not a text in the Bible that says that. When you look at the context of the Bible, you will notice that the Bible is dealing with something very specific. It's not dealing with some artificial adornment or some artificial garment. It's actually dealing with the length of the hair. That the covering has to do with the length of the hair. Now, notice length. When I talk about length, what am I dealing with? I'm dealing with the size of the hair, whether it's long or short. Now, notice when the apostle did this. Now, we're going to skip verses. Uh, 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 I'm going to back up to verse the, the four things that it brought out. It brought out in four things of the hair. The length of the hair was in four parts. Cover. What was, that next? What was the second thing? Uncover. What was the third thing? Shorn. What was the fourth? Shaven. Now, we don't have the time to multiply all the verses, uh, but we did before. And, and if you had a question, when we do question and answers, I'll let you ask. And we'll look in detail. Cover. We're going to find Well, let's let's see the cover. The Bible says what the covering is. Jump down to verse 13. In verse 13, we'll see the covering. In verse 13, the Bible says, judge in yourselves. Is it comely that a woman pray unto God? How? So it's asking about covering and immediately it's going to give the answer. What does he say? Shaw, put that on. No. Verse 14. The Bible says, doth not even what nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is a what? So immediately when he dealt with covering, he dealt with not just hair, but he dealt with the length of the hair. He said, if a man have what? Long hair. Long deals with what? Length. The Bible talks about long life. And length of days in Proverbs. Long life and length of days. So when I deal with long, I'm dealing with length of hair. So and then he says, watch now, verse 14. But it, it, nature itself teaches you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him. Verse 15. But if a woman have long hair, it is not a shame, but a what? Glory to her for her hair. Her hair is given her for a so the length of her hair or the length of hair is covering. If it is long hair. Now, so let's look back at this. So the Bible says if a man covers his head, it is a what? Is that what the Bible said? Now, you can check your answer. Well, what did the Bible say was the shame for the man? Verse 14. Doth not even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is a what? Shame. So he answers in the same verse. When he said a man covered his hair, it's shame. What was the covering of the hair? It said it's a shame for a man to have not just hair, but to have the length of his hair being what? Long. So then the covering is talking about what? Longer hair. Remember we're talking about man shorter, woman longer. So the covering is this longer hair. If a man is covered with this longer hair, shame. If a woman is covered with this longer hair, what? Glory. How do I know this longer hair? It has to be by what? Talk to me. Nature. It's almost like somebody saying, a man grows up to be five foot tall. That makes him super, super short because he's five foot tall. Is that right? So that, that means he's sinning because he's super short. Is that right? Do you know that we have to be by the law of what? The law of what? You know that the law of nature sets in our DNA everything about us. The color of the eye, the color of the skin, 
the size of the body, whether one is tall or short. The same way is true with hair. God is not saying that a woman has to be like this. Because somebody says, oh, if this is what God is saying on long hair. The woman has to be like this. Is that what God is saying? In fact, you will find out that that's not healthy. That's not healthy. You will find that this right here will create back problems and brain problems. You will find that God wants there to be an understanding, and we study through. This is Time Magazine. Now you, now you know how did long hair become a thing for women. Now you and I are studying. We don't necessarily know, need to know what Time says, but we're studying from what the Bible says, and we won't finish today. Now, my brothers and sisters, it actually quotes in, in, in Time Magazine, it says the Bible carried on the tradition, so they thought. And it says, and they went through and said, uh, 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 ancient Greek ideal, bearded, long-haired philosopher, women in society still had longer hair, longer hair than men regularly did. Roman women kept their uh, hair long and tended to part it down the center. The Bible said carried on this tradition. Paul's letter to Corinth, doth not what? Nature itself teach you that if a man of long hair, this is in Time Magazine. Now, my brothers and sisters, as we look at this, it's talking about using nature. What if a woman treats her hair right, does not cut it, but has it natural, and it's not as long as every other woman? Does that make it bad? As long as she has naturally not cut her hair, then her hair is her covering. Now, what does uncover mean? If cover means long hair, what does uncover mean? Shorter hair. So what if a woman, she has longer hair, but she says, I want to be in harmony with the fashion of society and cuts it shorter. Is that her DNA? Is that the law of her nature? If she cuts it shorter than a man, she's choosing to fashion herself after some idea. And if it didn't come from the Bible, it came from somewhere else. And so my brothers and sisters, this is shorter hair uncovered. What about shorn you remember, and you look at verses six, it says, for the woman be not covered, let her also be shorn. But if it be a shame for a woman to be shorn or what? Shaven. What is the difference between shorn and shaven? So shorn, what, what does that come from? Where does the terminology of shorn come from? If you were studying the Bible, I can't go through all the text now, but the sheep were sheared or shorn. And so when you cut sheep, you cut the sheep. And so it has not, no hair at all in the body. Nobody who cuts sheep that way. We have sheep around us and you see them and that's not what happens. They cut it, guess what? Extreme. Extremely short. That's shorn. Shaven. Biblically, when you talk about shaven, it's dealing with something not extremely short. When it's shaven, the Bible speaks of something when a razor is put to it and it's cut, guess how? Bald. 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 So shaven means bald. These are the four things that the apostle was talking about. And he identifies when you read through 1 Corinthians 11 with that in mind, you would actually see what he's saying. Now, my brothers and sisters, God, in conclusion, is trying to show us something. We'll come back to that when we, probably when we deal with question and answers. But all through time, there's been change in society. It says that the bob is a symbol of the what? Independent, progressive, and spirited woman. Strong women throughout history have been defined by their what? Bob. bob hairstyle. Now, where did this come from? This says, in the 50s, the bob took on a different what? Guess what they called it? The, the page, what's the next word? Why? Why did, why did they call it the page boy? Why? Because it looked what? Boyish. Male or female? Boyish. Male or female? Male. So if a woman took on this boyish haircut, then is it a shame or a glory? Shame. Does God condemn a person if they didn't know? No. Does God want to condemn us? No. What is he trying to do? He's trying to educate us. Now let's close. I mean, I'm, I'm, we'll, we'll come back to this. Don't worry. We'll come back to this. Now look what this says. This is so key. Appearance is more than just what? Glory. Clothing. Now this, the woman who wrote this, his name is Eleanor Methurst. She's a famous lesbian historian. She is a lesbian herself. She's writing through lesbian history. In fact, this woman here, uh, lesbian fashion history, my name is Eleanor Methurst. I'm addressing what? Historian and a dyke. She's talking about a, a, a lesbian. I'm from the UK, based in Birmingham, and am temporarily living in Tokyo. My studies, both in undergrad and postgrad level, in other words, she's done deep study on this, and she's 
uh, is talking about in the fields of queer history and fashion history, I believe that lesbian fashion is either sidelined or completely what? So she wanted to bring out lesbian history. She's not against it, but watch what she says, someone in favor of it. She says, appearance is more than just clothing. It is our skin. It is our nails, the tilt of our mouths or the furrows of our brows, the tattoos that may adorn us and the hair on our our, so she says that clothing, appearance, is not just clothing, but the appearance also takes in, and we should shun the very appearance of evil. Our legs, our armpits. <laughs> of course, most of my work culminates in the study of what? Garments. As garments are what? Covers our bodies. Something that can be easily swapped and changed where? Now watch what she says. Clothing may signify lesbian. Now you know, you know what they're saying? When I dress a certain way, it may be that maybe. But there are times when it is hairstyle that does what? Lead the way to what? Lesbianism. The confusion of gender. The style of the hair. I've recently been working on a lecture about queer women's hairstyles throughout what? History. And this article is based on part of that. There is no there is so much to be said about queer women's hair and lesbian hair. But the focus of this article is the longstanding theme of persevering lesbian stereotype of what? Short hair or fully shaven heads. This stretches from all the way back from the literature of ancient Greece. Up to the think piece. Now, where was what, what was in vogue in First Corinthians? Talking to talking to him. This was a, this was an Athens. Uh, uh, Corinth was an Athens uh, 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 colony. It says this stretches from all the way back from the of ancient Greece up to think pieces and Instagram posts of what? And it is this lineage that I want to what trace for you now. So what she's telling us is that hairstyle was used to pave the way to produce homosexuality. To confuse the nation. And she shows in all the nations. Now, when a nation reaches that point, what is a nation getting ready to do when the predominant social condition is this? Talk to me. Collapse. Are we here today? Now, I'm going to stop right here. I, I, it says we're going to trace it now, but I can't trace it now. We're, going to, we're not going to trace it now. Brothers and sisters, right now in the Supreme Court, right now in the Supreme Court, the issue is being dealt with right now. You know, I always have to turn it on so I don't tempt myself. But in the, in the Supreme Court, the issue is being dealt, up or dealt with now over the Sabbath, the false Sabbath, which must necessarily bring to view the true Sabbath. Are we ready for this? No. God wants us to come back to understand his headship and his what? Order. That God wants to set our hearts and our home in order so instead of our families collapsing and falling, that God can preserve our lives and our homes. We've got to go back and say, Lord, in order to be what you want me to be, I have to become holy. And what is holiness? Holiness is what? Constant agreement with God. Even before you get to the detail, we're going to look at some of the hairstyles and we're going to compare the hairstyles to what the Bible says about hairstyles. And we're going to see the hairstyles that bring confusion and the hairstyles that bring glory. The hairstyles that are holy and the hairstyles that are unholy. How would I know the difference? Because someone says it's holy. It has to agree with God. How do I know it agrees with God? To the law and to the? If it speak not according to this holy word, it's because there is no light. Do you know that it doesn't matter what the subject is, whether it's dress or anything else, whether it's hair or anything else, this week, I want us to be thinking, if we're going to take what we're learning, Lord, I want to have a relationship with you, and that means that you must make me holy. And so I want to learn to agree with you on everything. Do you want to agree with God? Do you want to agree with God? To say, Lord, I agree with you today. Will you agree with him? Will you do it? Today, I want to say, Lord, I want to agree with you. I don't care what my tradition is, what the family does, what husband and wife, Lord. As a family, as for me and my house, Lord, teach us today to agree with you. Is that your desire? Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we can see through the study of heels and hair and holiness that the real issue is our relationship with you. And that the only reason that you're interested in our hair is because you value us. 
and you value our relationship, but you cannot have a marriage or a relationship with us unless we are of your kind and are made holy. We cannot make ourselves holy, Lord. We must be in agreement with you. But Lord, there are many things in our lives that are not in agreement with you. Our ideas of church, our ideas of music, our ideas of dress, our ideas of hair. But Lord, today we want to acknowledge that there is a difference. And we want to ask that you will change us and help us to agree with you. And there's someone here today that says, Lord, I don't care what anyone else is doing. 